Illinois takes on Moorhead State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I'm going to give an in-depth scouting report on Moorhead State, including five things you need to know, a film breakdown, and a scouting report on their roster. The first thing you need to know about Moorhead State is they have one of the largest three-point attempt differentials in the country. So basically what that means is they attempt a ton more three-pointers than they allow. And so on offense, they're 25th in the country in three-point attempt rate, and on defense, they are 23rd in three-point attempt rate, aka they shoot a ton of threes and they do not allow a ton of threes. On offense, they've taken as many threes as twos eight times this season. Number two is Riley Minix is their guy. The NAIA transfer was the OVC player of the year this season and can legitimately score at all three levels. We'll talk more about him in a bit, but he just, he loves working from the high post, is comfortable stretching the floor, and, and Illinois is going to have to figure out a way to slow him down. Third thing, Moorhead State runs a ton of sets, they and they just run a ton of good stuff. We'll go over a couple examples in a bit in my film breakdown, but they are fantastic at running pin downs, setting screens for shooters to get open, or creating just looks off design ball screens in general. Illinois struggled on the defensive end, and if they aren't locked in defensively, that opens the door for Moorhead State to shoot lights out and keep this game close. Fourth is Moorhead State is one of the slowest offensive teams in the country. Now, when they aren't running sets, at times it is just kind of a lot of standing around and hoping for either Minix or one of their guards to create something and score. They don't always move the fastest even within their sets, but they are just so methodical in their movements that that's what really makes them successful. Illinois is going to need to control the pace of this game, not allow it to be just a complete slow um, slugfest and be able to get out and run a little bit. Now, the fifth thing is Moorhead State does not provide a ton of help on defense, and they often turn offenses into more of an isolation or a two-on-two -two type game. Now, this works for Illinois, right? As, as we all know, Terrence Shannon and Marcus Domask are more than comfortable running pick and roll or just creating an isolation. So I'm going to show some film in a couple of minutes, but Moorhead State will often just show a very deep drop coverage with not a ton of help from the weeks. So this means that the ball handler has space to get to the mid range, but it is difficult for them to get to the rim all the way. Okay, so let's get into some film breakdown now of Moorhead State. This first play I'm going to show is the very first play of the game. And it's going to be for Minix. Minix right here is the guy I've been talking about a little bit. He is number 22 for Moorhead State. So he's going to get the ball to the top of the key, pass to the wing. And now he's just going to kind of fake this screen right here. This is more just kind of decoy. And what this is setting up is Moorhead State loves setting like a cross screen for Minix. And so he's going to set a cross screen kind of in any, it can be set anywhere kind of in this area. And Minix is just going to cut to this block generally over here. And so now as the ball gets swung, we're going to look rewind a little bit you can see here's that kind of cross screen the rub screen and so now Minix is going to be looking for the ball here and Minix oftentimes will catch it out here at more of like the high post even close to the three-point line and then he'll often usually um, just kind of face up and go to work from there now in this one he drives middle and uh, SIUE does a good job kind of cutting him off forcing him back here this is where the help is and you can see right now this like this probably shouldn't be a shot but Minix is just so good that he's able to get the shot up off the glass, get it to go. Now this play right here that I'm gonna go through is just one that Moorhead State loves to and variations of it. And so high ball screen right here, again, just kind of a decoy. They're gonna flip it back to the big right here at the top of the key. And then they're gonna set up, this is called Chicago action. So it's a pin down into a handoff and they love that. They love setting pin downs, whether it be into a handoff or just off ball. Um, and this one right here is going to be for that number 15, um, Khalil Thomas, which we will talk about in a little bit, but he is a 43% three-point shooter. You cannot let him get any sort of open look. And right here, I mean, this is just, um, as, as the handoff happens, he's going to kind of roll into the defender there as he's moving, kind of works as a, a screen, moving screen, but it's one of those where it's just like, he's also moving into the same spot. So nothing going to get it called. But regardless, pin down into a handoff, and now Thomas is going to be wide, wide open at the top of the key, 43% three-point shooter. Now, Moorhead State runs a ton of ball screens, but oftentimes they're just better for creating shots for others. And, and Drew Thelwell, number three, is, is one that highlights that for sure, but they can run it with everybody. This time it's going to be Minix. He's going to be getting a screen here. Um, and this is once again, Khalil Thomas, number 15, the shooter that cannot be left open. He's going to try to ghost this. And so by ghosting, it means he's not going to make contact and just kind of come out to the top of the key here. Uh, this right here, number four, is going to slide down to the corner. Now, the defender um, from UT Martin does run into him, so there is contact made. But in an ideal world, there isn't a ton of contact made. 
and it immediately flows into a flare screen. So now 23 is going to screen uh, Thomas's man right here as Thomas is coming out to kind of this opposite wing. And so then as that happens, he's going to get another great look from three. Again, 43% three-point shooter, can't leave him open. And so this is going to be more of a defensive clip right here. And so initial ball screen at the top, Moorhead State's going to switch guard to guard. They're comfortable doing that. The Where I want to talk about next is where just kind of the next ball screen comes from. And so as this ball screen happens, notice that he... Um, Right, right now it's Minix, but it's it's Minix or any of their bigs, really. He's going to be in drop coverage. And so he's going to be free throw liner below pretty much. And he's going to be kind of scooting back, making sure to help take away the rim. The on-ball guard is going to fight over these screens and try to force the ball handler into this mid-range area. Now, I, I think at times this can be a deeper drop. I think against, you know, Terrence Shannon, who can just eat up space, this will have to be a little bit higher like this. Um, but this is what, what Moorhead State will do, and they're going to live with the mid-range. They don't allow a ton of threes. They don't allow a ton of shots at the rim. The other thing to notice is part of why they don't allow a ton of threes is look how there's just no help anywhere from the strong side, and there isn't a ton of help ready from the weak side. And so they're going to stick home on shooters, and this is where it turns into a little bit more of that iso ball or a two-on-two -two game if they have a roller. Um, the, the, you, can beat, you can beat them from the mid-range. But when, especially when it's Shannon, I would like to see him actually just eat up the space and get downhill. Like if this is the space Shannon gets, he should get to the rim every single time. But UT Martin does a great job here getting to the mid range and knocking it down. Now let's get into the roster rotation for Moorhead State. They really only run a seven man rotation at this point. So I'm gonna go, I'll hit in depth on the top guys more and then a little bit on some of the more rotational players. So most important, we've already mentioned him in this video a bunch, number 22, Riley Minix. He is averaging 21 points per game on efficient shooting. And so he's 33.1% from three on the year. You have to at least respect him out there for sure. But what's so impressive is he's shooting 83.6% at the rim. That is that is a wild number. Now, a lot of that comes from post-up looks where he can get to the rim off of just kind of facing up and driving, but he can also operate out of the mid range. And, and he is the guy that is the engine for this offense without a doubt. Now, number three, Drew Thelwell is a six foot three point guard that is tasked with setting up the offense a lot. He averages 5.6 assists per game and he'll run a ton of pick and rolls, but he, where he's really effective is when he's creating for others out of these pick and rolls rather than being a score. I think he's an okay enough defender, but he is going to be giving up size to pretty much whoever he is guarding on Illinois. Number two, Jordan Lathan is the other backcourt running mate alongside Thelwell. And I describe him as more of kind of the go-to late shot clock guy. And so what I mean by that is he's someone on the perimeter that they can just throw the ball to and say, go create a shot for us, whether it be a pull up or, or try to get downhill. He's more comfortable uh, pulling up, whether it be for three or kind of in that mid range. And that's where he is more effective, but he can get downhill when needed. And he's just kind of the where, where Minix is the main guy. Lathan is kind of that secondary score that Moorhead State needs. So next, number 15, Khalil Thomas. He cannot, under any circumstances, be left wide open. He is 90 for 208 from three on the year, which is good for 43.3%. That is 65th in the country. And that is crazy high volume right there, too. He can shoot off movement. He can shoot off standstill. He can shoot off the dribble. Like, you, you have to run him off the line. He is not that comfortable once he is inside the line. Um, but he is so good, and Moorhead State is so good at getting him shots on the perimeter, whether it be off of their sets or just kind of in their motion, and he cannot be left open at all. Number 23, Deontay Miles, is a 7-footer that is more of a rim protector than anything. The top four guys I just mentioned before were are pretty much the main guys offensively for Moorhead State. Deontay Miles, it, he isn't used a ton on offense, but when he is, it's mainly around the rim, and he's pretty good on the offensive glass. On defense, he'll be the main guy in a deep drop coverage to help protect the rim. Uh, he has shown that he can hedge if needed, but generally he's going to be kind of stationed around the rim on both ends. Number five, Zach Yemi is the other big on this team at six foot nine. Similar to Miles, he isn't used a ton on offense, and when he is, it's pretty much all at the rim. He can move some defensively, but is mainly going to be in that drop coverage on defense. And lastly, number four, Eddie Ricks is a freshman wing that is just really good on the defensive end, arguably their best defender. He can help protect the rim, he has good size, or he can kind of guard on the perimeter because I, I think he has pretty good quickness as well. On offense, he's only shooting 28% from three on the year. Now when he gets downhill to the rim, he finds success, but that hasn't happened too often. So all in all, I do think Illinois wins this game. I don't know how Moorhead State stops either Shannon or Dombask, let alone both. 
However, if Illinois kind of is lackadaisical on defense, especially to start this game, allows Moorhead State to maybe start five for seven from three, five for eight from three, which they very well can do. I wouldn't be shocked if Moorhead State makes this a game for 20 or 30 minutes. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and click here to see how Illinois won the Big Ten tournaments.